Uh, so let me see. Uh, so maybe we'll get started now. So Jian Hong has a meeting, so he has asked me to, uh, to uh, sort of chair the beginning. Uh, so uh, welcome to the first uh, Canadian COVID-19 Math Modeling Task Force Distinguished Lecture Series. Uh, so this is uh, the, the Canadian COVID Task Force is hosted by the Fields Institute. And so before uh, we get started, I'm going to uh, pass things over to Kumar Murthy, the uh, director of the Fields Institute, who wants to say a few words. Hi. Thanks, thanks, Julian. I just wanted to welcome everybody to this uh, um, uh, first meeting, as uh, Julian said, of the uh, Task Force uh, seminar series. Uh, the, uh, this task force was put together uh, uh, a very short notice with the full cooperation of uh, all of the Canadian mathematics research institutes, fields, together with the Pacific Institute of Mathematical Sciences, the Centre de Recherche Mathematique, and uh, the Atlantic Association for Research in Mathematical Sciences. And uh, the scientific lead is John Hong, and I'm really grateful to him and to all the members of the research group for coming together so quickly. And I think uh, this particular uh, opportunity will be uh, uh, a really good one for us. So without further ado, I uh, <laughs> go on with the seminar. Thanks. Okay. So uh, as our first speaker, uh, we have the pleasure of uh, welcoming Pierre Magal. Uh, so it's particularly nice for me because Pierre is someone I've known for uh, quite a few years. Actually, Pierre got his PhD from the same university in which I started my studies. Uh, he is now a full professor at the Université de Bordeaux. Um, they change names all the time in France, so are you still Université de Bordeaux or is it something else right now? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Bordeaux, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, Pierre is going to uh, talk to us about under, uh, understanding unreported cases in the COVID outbreak. Uh, so uh, Pierre, uh, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it's uh, a new experience for me to give a talk uh, like that, uh, first time. Um, and of course, uh, it's very nice to do this now because, um, because basically, uh, it's, I think it's a good time to talk about COVID, right? For everybody. And so the goal of my presentation is to talk about uh, unreported uh, case and, um, and the importance of public, uh, health, uh, public health intervention. Well, uh, problem. Ah, okay. So this is a joint work with several people. Uh, first, uh, Chihua Liu from uh, Beijing, Beijing Normal University, Usman Seidi from uh, Ecole Polytechnique de Thiès in Senegal, and Glenn Webb from Vanderbilt University in uh, US. Uh, so we started uh, something like two months ago uh, to work on this, and the starting point was, by, by the way, a paper by Jean Wangou modeling uh, this kind of uh, disease. As usual, Jean Wang is very fast, and we tried to um, we tried here to focus on a new kind of problem, namely the, the um, hided uh, cases and try to understand their impact on, on the, the, the number of cases and, and, and the evolution of the disease uh, in this particular problem. Okay, so um, first I, I want to make a, a sort of a comment about where I was for the first of the, for the new year this year, I actually I was in Hunan province visiting some friends who got married there and giving a talk uh, uh, at Hunan University. And uh, on the way back, actually, uh, I, I went back to, to Beijing, which is my base camp. And so I went through basically Wuhan city. So I took the train with many people getting on the train in Wuhan, so uh, this, so 
At that time, nobody said a word about the disease. And only when I went back to France, I realized that uh, this was, uh, this, I, I, I realized uh, the danger of this kind of uh, trip. And so uh, here is a, a map uh, for, uh, for the number of cases uh, in China on March 7. And you can see that this uh, uh, Hubei province here is uh, the, the worst part of China. And basically, this will be uh, all along the, the outbreak, the worst province for this uh, disease. So uh, what I want to talk about today uh, are the unreported cases. Uh, well, the unreported cases, accordingly to the, the epidemiologists, are the, the ones that are missed because the authority are not uh, testing in us. And another, another one is, uh, or is, well, they are either not detected, they have the mild symptoms, say, and not detected, or um, they are just uh, uh, asymptomatic. So they are just getting infect, infected and, uh, and and they are not yet showing symptoms. Well, um, the first evidence for this, uh, this kind of uh, problem came from an example of a business meeting in, in Germany, where one guy uh, who showed no symptom at that time, in fact, uh, uh, four people. This was a paper published in New England Journal of Medicine uh, one of the early papers about uh, COVID-19. Another example for unreported cases are, uh, is, is uh, provided by a Japanese team here, uh, where they publish a paper in uh, International Journal of Infectious Disease about uh, 13 people evacu evacuated from the Diamond Princess where uh, four of them never, sh never uh, developed any symptom wh while they were infected, actually. Um, they were tested positive, actually. Um, another team, actually, in China suggested that on February 18, that there were a huge number of people that, was, that got the virus in uh, well, 30, 37,000 people uh, who got the virus in Wuhan, actually, and didn't, uh, and this was not detected by the authority, actually. At all. So this is one of the questions we we are especially interested here, and uh, the first paper we 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 saw was one paper in published in Lancet uh, for uh, who, who actually. Uh, consider a susceptible exposed infectious and recovered metapopulation model to describe the movement of people uh, within China through airplane, airplane tra traffic uh, and all sorts of, uh, mainly airplane traffic. Uh, another paper uh, where I think Zhang Wang Wu is involved, which is one of the early pep earliest papers about this topic, uh, consider an SEIR compartmental model bla uh, where, where they first try to apply this kind of model to the data. Actually. But there was no unreported cases in this kind of work. Well, uh, the problem of uh, considering the unreported cases was considered in our uh, early paper here. Uh, we, we wrote two papers about, about this kind of question for SEIR, for SIR, sorry. And uh, we applied this, we applied this to the uh, influenza epidemic in New York City. And the, the point is, how, how do we apply the SIR model to see this kind of, of disease? Okay, so now um, let's turn to our, 
our model. So our model is considering um, an S uh, asymptomatic infectious individual, people who got infected and are capable to transmit the pathogen, the virus here, and, uh, but don't show any symptom yet. And then we get the reported, actually uh, reported stand for uh, severe symptoms. In the people with severe symptoms, basically uh, the one that will be easy, easily detected by the authority. And, uh, and we get another compartment for the unreported. Uh, this corre this corresponds to the, the people who, who show some mild symptoms, actually, or maybe no symptoms, right? And so this, this goes together with, with some initial data at, at the initial time T0. Basically, we don't know the initial time as well, actually, in such a problem. So the question we are trying to address today is how to use such a model to, 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 to uh, understand the data. No? Um, here we neglect the exposed class. Uh, the exposed individuals are nothing but uh, infected that are not yet capable to transmit the pathogen. And um, at first we neglected the exposed class because we thought it would be simply uh, we would be simpler, but it turns out it turns out that um, uh, there are some good reasons to neglect that as well, actually. And um, one one of the main reason is that um, for for the COVID nineteen, the it has been shown that uh, people have a very high uh, viral load. Uh, at the early stage of the infection. So, uh, and we confirmed that in a recent paper we, we published here, we, that was accepted. And uh, by comparing some SIR model to the data. Actually. And what we found is uh, the exposed class should be something, in, something like in between six and 12 hours. So it's very short and Therefore, it can be neglected somehow. Anyway, so the compartment, uh, the compartment flow, the diagram flux here, we start from an S compartment, people go to the I, and then they split into the reported or unreported, and then they go, they go removed. And so, well, the tr what I should say here is what is important is that here we assume that the I and the U have the same uh, uh, transmission rate, which might not be totally right. And we assume that the R, since they are reported, should not transmit uh, the virus to uh, the susceptible, which might not be true also. It's, it's maybe not that perfect. Okay, anyway, so that's all sort of simplification here. But uh, the, so the question at this stage is, is to try to, uh, to see what we can do with such a model to fit the data and how to do it. Uh, so we need to estimate the initial time of the epidemic that is unknown. Uh, we know the number uh, of susceptible at the beginning of the epidemic because it's a new epidemic and nobody has been infected before. We don't know actually uh, the infected at the beginning. We don't know the or something similar to this. Uh, the transmission rate is unknown as well. Well, we will assume that uh, we know, we need to know something here and we, we will fix the value of the average time of asymptomatic infectiousness uh, 
because it's based on previous uh, covirus infection. That's what medical people was doing at the beginning of the epidemic. So they assumed that this number was around seven days. And uh, the same for the symptomatic average time of symptomatic infectiousness was assumed to be seven days. Then another important parameter here is a fraction of asymptomatic infectious uh, that become reported. So this is a fraction of uh, people that will be reported when they got in, infect, uh, asymptomatic infected infectious. Then uh, this fraction is again unknown, but the more you are testing the population, of course, uh, the more you know, uh, the more this, this value should be large, actually. Huh? And so, but it's not, again, it's a, a parameter that is not uh, so easy to evaluate. Huh? Okay, so uh, in order to um, compare the model to the data, we, we can start from uh, influenza outbreak, what we did before. And uh, the parameter, what we, the problem before was all these parameters was unknown, as well as the initial condition. So here the only advantage is this one is the S, the number of susceptible at the beginning is known, but we need to evaluate uh, all the rest by finding some, by, the, the, by using some new method actually. So that's what I want to present now. Okay, so what is supposed to be known is the number of of reported case. So the number of reported case is nothing but mu1 times this integral here. Uh, so that is a flux, uh, uh, the cumulated number of reported, uh, reported in symptomatic infectious. Okay, so we start, so the basic idea is, is that here, instead of, um, of uh, trying to feed the data directly, we want first to replace this uh, CR of T by an exponential. So the idea is that when the epidemic starts, uh, the number um, the number of infected infected grows like an exponential. Actually, so basically we 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 look for uh, uh, we first feed the CR of T with an exponential function like that. That is not exactly a classical case because we want this guy to be zero at T zero. So, uh, so we need a chi uh, three here, chi one, chi two, chi three that are unknown. And uh, if you forget about chi three, this problem is classical. And uh, unfortunately, when you take chi 3 positive, the problem becomes turn to be not so classical. So what we will do here, we will fix chi 3 and uh, try to estimate from this chi 3 the chi 1, chi 2. That, that this become, it becomes a classical problem then. Uh, that's an exponential fitting problem. Okay. So here we fixed uh, uh, different value for the chi 3 and we obtain uh, by using uh, some uh, fitting, exponential fitting, we, we obtain chi 1, chi 2 for each set of data coming from either China, Hubei province or Hunan city. And so doing, we, we can obtain the value for the initial time, the value for the initial time will be what? Will be when the number of reported cases are equal to zero. So uh, we simply solve this equation and we obtain from uh, chi one, chi two, chi three, the value for T zero. Okay, so the, the value we obtain for T zero corresponds, if we take the initial time T0 equal, uh, T equal zero at December 31. Then uh, the beginning of the epidemic by using the data from China, 
was uh, January the 5th. And uh, by using the data coming from, from Hubei uh, was December 28th. And the last one, uh, by using the data coming from Wuhan, uh, the starting time was 26. So we get different starting time, of course, depending on the value K1, K2, K3 we, we take. So uh, the idea now is to uh, replace this uh, exponential into, uh, into the model and to estimate uh, estimate the initial value I0, U0, and tau. And so the data, we, we get three sets of data, one set for mainland of China, one set from, for Hubei province, one set for Hunan city. And uh, on this uh, uh, slide, you can see uh, the da data and the exponential uh, here, that is the, this first two figures correspond to China, this one correspond to Hubei province, and this one correspond to Wuhan city. Yeah. And so, um, by the way, you can see that the data are much more regular for China than for, for Wuhan city. Here you get a, a huge jump uh, that is due to a change in the method to uh, to test the people, actually, they changed the number of tests uh, uh, at uh, that day, actually. So this uh, discontinuity in the data is due to uh, simply the different method to collect the data. Okay. And so, but nevertheless, here you see a beautiful line in the log scale, huh, which correspond in the normal scale to this one. Huh? And so, uh, so that is to show you the correspondence between uh, the function, the exponential function and the data. And one may think that maybe it's enough to deal with the exponential, actually not. Because if you keep going with the exponential, you get those values here. And you can see that uh, you diverge right away from the data. Uh, so, um, on uh, January 30, you get, uh, in reality, uh, 8,163, while the model, the exponential model, predicts those values here. And uh, then later on, the next day, on January 31, you get this one instead of this one. So the model becomes immediately false. And so uh, it's not sufficient to deal with an exponential function for sure. Okay. So next, I want to turn. I want to turn to how to deal with the ODE model and how to fit the parameter. So the first thing we know is that the initial value for the S is this 11 million people, and uh, we need to fix the fraction of. Uh, the fraction of reported symptomatic infectious uh, to uh, in between, we will fix here this value in between 80% and 100%. So basically, we will use 0 0.8. Uh, the value for the average time during which a patient stay asymptomatic infectious vary between one and seven days. But the medical people most mainly use the seven day value. The same for the average time during which a patient stay symptomatic infectious, which will be actually more likely to be seven days. And so uh, once we fix those values, then we know new one, new two. Okay. Okay, so the idea now is we replace CR of T by this exponential function we just found and see what it gives into the OD, OD system. So, uh, but in order to replace that, we first assume that uh, we are at the early be beginning of the infection. And so the value of the, the number of susceptible is not changing too much. So we can take 
the number of susceptible uh, constant equal to S0. And so, uh, excuse me, just get the sun. Constant equal to S0 and plug, uh, putting that into the I equation and replacing, we get a formula like that for I0 and uh, a formula for tau, a formula for U0 expressed in terms of chi1, chi2, t0, f, nu, uh, or this formula, the same, actually. Uh, the same for tau, it is expressed in function of chi2, nu, eta, uh, nu2, s0, and the same for uh, u0. We can also use this extra value for r0 uh, uh, as an initial value. Okay. Uh, we can also compute for this specific model the basic reproductive number. And this, this is given by this formula. We use the method, the classical method of uh, uh, the classical method to compute the basic reproductive number. And now, uh, since we know the value for tau, uh, we can replace the formula we just found and we obtain this. Formula, formula for the basic reproductive number. Okay, so let's see. So as I said before, we use f equal 0 0.8, uh, eta equal uh, 1 over 7, and u equal 1 over 7. And for the different uh, set of data, namely for, for China, we find r0 equal 4.13. For Ube province, we find R0 uh, 3.82 and uh, another value for Wuhan city, which of course depends on the value K1, K2. You know? Okay, that is, uh, on this figure, I plot the ODE model compared to the, the data. The red dots here are the data and the ODE, the black curve here is corresponding to the uh, cumulated, cumulated reported cases. And the blue curve are the cumulated unreported cases. So you can see that uh, it fits very well the data at the beginning. Uh, that is, the, this first figure corresponds to the data for China. This second figure corresponds to the data for Hubei province. And this third figure corresponds to the data for Wuhan city. And of course, the data are becoming very irregular for Wuhan city, but still we can we can follow uh, we can follow the general tendency of uh, general behavior of the data. Okay. Uh, in order to talk about turning point, we need to define uh, what is a turning point. Uh, maybe I should. Uh, and the, so the turning point will be the maximal value of uh, the reported cases. So we assume basically that the reported cases will go up and down, or oh, come on, uh, will go up and down, and the maximal value for the reported cases will be called here the turning point. Actually, the turning point is not so easy to define, and it really depends on what you, you are talking about. You, you get several ways to evaluate that. It's not so simple, actually. Anyway, so here, uh, that's a simulation for China when, when of the model, when you don't, uh, you don't, uh, in absence of major public health intervention, namely, you fit the data at the beginning and you, you look at what will happen by, by changing nothing in the model, okay? And so, of course, uh, we end up with a huge number of cases for Wuhan city, which is almost the whole population city. We end up with almost 9 million people infected, actually, which is, of course, not realistic because people will start to, uh, to escape. Uh, and, and uh, of course, also because there will be some public intervention like uh, confinement. And so, 
So the black curve here are the accumulated number. The red curve are the, uh, the reported cases and the blue curve are the unreported cases here. And so you can see that the uh, turning point here is around 53 something, okay? Which corresponds to February 23, actually. Okay. And um, of course, the, the no uh, measure, no measure, uh, the, the previous case is not realistic, and we need to take care of uh, strong confinement measure. And so, uh, what happened in Wuhan is that on January 23, uh, the public transportation was shut down and uh, people started to, 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 need, uh, to, to, uh, to stay at home. And on February, on January 25th, actually, uh, the private uh, transportation was shut down as well. And in between, many people uh, left Wuhan Actually, five million people uh, left Wuhan because it was uh, they tried to escape the disease, of course. Huh? And so there are all sort of uh, all sort of uh, reason for for the transmission to 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 be reduced after this period. And so uh, the idea here next is to to say, okay, we fixed the par the value of two to the, the value estimated before, uh, uh, before uh, January 25th. And then after that, we, we shut down uh, or, or we, we, we let to, uh, we fix to to be zero after that. That is the perfect case, perfect isolation confinement case, which is also not so realistic because nothing is immediate. But nevertheless, uh, compared to before, we pass from uh, 9 million to now 7,000 uh, 7, people uh, at most, 7,000 uh, infected case at most, which is much more realistic now. And so uh, the turning point is, still, is now on day 30, January 30, actually. Uh, the real one was something like here, actually. So we were actually very close to the real one here for China. And uh, if you, so this was a fit by using the data for mainland China, okay? But now if you use the data, the parameter K1, K2, K3, by using the data from Ube province, you get this one. So the number of, the total number of cases reduced, and now it goes up to 4,000. And, but the turning point is still the same. So that's, and the same for Wuhan city, uh, the total number of cases reduced and the turning point is still again the same. So there must be something there. Uh, we don't really know why it's the same, but why well, the, the data are different. Okay. Um, you can also plot the uh, basic reproductive number in function function of f and one of a new here, and you can see Sorry. that when f increased. One question. One, hello. Uh, one question. Okay. Uh, so that this is a non-perfect case. You mean that even uh, the after twenty third uh, January, this is transmission rate is we can stop, but it can be decay. Yeah, yeah, I will, I will talk about that uh, later on, actually. I, I, will, I will come to this right after. Um, because uh, let, me, let me go back. Uh, uh, yeah, this is extreme, extreme, uh, uh, extreme case, of course. But uh, at the beginning, we thought it was okay to, to start with this in order to describe this uh, limitation idea. And uh, due to the very strong intervention uh, uh, in China, it would have been possible that uh, a total shutdown and so on. But it's not realistic, of course. It's not, never perfect. Huh? Never perfect. 
and never immediate in particular. And so, uh, anyway, we get the, this our, our basic reproduction number. We can plot this ba basic reproduction number in function of the parameter and see their influence on, on the basic reproduction number. Huh? So next, uh, that's where I come to the uh, less perfect, uh, less e extreme uh, description of the confinement. Uh, in the next paper, actually, we wrote, uh, we consider this model for the, trans the transmission rate. Actually. So here, uh, we get the first day of confinement that is called N. So before that, everything, the transmission rate, rate is constant and estimated by the method I described before. And right after these days, the transmission uh, decay exponentially fast, but with the speed that is depending on a parameter mu that we call intensity of confinement. confinement. So now we get a problem with two more parameters to fit uh, to the data. And, uh, and that is the function tau now, the transmission rate, uh, of course, decaying exponentially fast, but it's not instantaneous. That is the point. Okay. In order to uh, convince you that uh, this is uh, uh, at least good for China, for the data for China, uh, we get a figure taken from our second paper uh, where you first use the, the red dots here are the data, okay? Uh, the data, here we take the data until the day uh, 31, okay? And we fit, we take the best fit by using, by, by using, by, by changing mu actually. And uh, we get the first best fit here. And you can see the final value is uh, 50,000, okay? which is not perfect, but uh, which is good already after, that is after one week, okay? Now, uh, after two weeks, we uh, fit a little better the value for mu and see the final value for the total number, the cumulative number of report, uh, reported case, it goes up to uh, 60,000, okay? And you can see that the, the fit is becoming already uh, much better when you compare to the, the last, the last, uh, the, the final value, the real final value that is actually uh, 60,000, okay? So we already, uh, this, during the second week, we already fit very well the data. And uh, later on, okay, that is the third week, fourth week, and so on, we get, uh, after that, mu is almost unchanged, and uh, we get almost a, a perfect fit from the second or the third, say, okay, the, the fourth week, say. Okay, but it's already very good uh, at, the, at the second week. Well, I must say this is very special that for, it works very well for the data for China. Uh, one reason is that we know it's very clear when we should take N, the N value first. So the beginning of the confinement period is very clear for China. And uh, something, well, apparently, uh, the, it works very well for the data for China. It's less easy to do for other countries, okay? Yeah, there are many difficulties. But uh, so in the end, uh, that's what we get for, uh, we can fit perfectly the uh, accumulated data for China. We get, so the red dots here are the data and the black curve is of course the, the, the curve coming from the model that is a reported case data, huh? uh, no, the reported case uh, curve and the green curve are the unreported. Uh, uh, Something else we can do here, we can compare with the weekly data, namely we sum up the daily data of one week, and we can compare that to the, uh, to the, to the weekly, uh, to the R curve, or to the U curve and the I curve. 
and we observe that it's not very, it's not perfect for sure, but uh, it's not too bad. We get a, a, a sort of description. The, the weekly data are in between the purple curve and the, and the red curves. Okay. For the daily number of cases, we, add, we need to add one more equation, uh, taking care of the fact that the people will stay, uh, stay uh, daily reported only one day. So we, we take a, a, here a coefficient one here in order to take care of that. And see that is a, a prediction from the model, so the blue curve are the prediction from the model and the, the black point are the data, the daily data. When, uh, so the, that is uh, the number of cases every day, okay? Okay, so I will stop here and that's uh, the paper we wrote about the topic. I must mention maybe, okay, the first part of my talk was in this first paper published in MPDI Biology. The second part uh, uh, mentioning this, uh, talking about this new uh, transmission rate, exponentially decaying transmission rate as in position mathematical biosciences and engineering. Um, the part devoted to the, uh, to study the expo exposure has been uh, published in uh, infectious disease modeling. And uh, we get a, a uh, a working report uh, where we apply our method to uh, South Korea, Italy, and France, and Germany that is available on MedArchive. So, thank you very much for your attention. Maybe I'm too short. I have no idea. Uh, I don't thank know. Actually. Thank you, That's Pierre. Right. I think it's good because now we can uh, have a lot of questions. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know how we do this because, um, uh, so if, if, does anybody have a question? Uh, yes, I, I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, so the, the, uh, you know, the, at present we have uh, the, in, uh, the very bad situation in New York City. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this is due to the random motion of the people. So mm -hmm. they are going from one place to others, which means that uh, instead of the PDE, instead of the of ODE model, we have to consider also the diffusion effect. I don't know if a diffusion effect is a good model for that. Yeah. Seems yeah. to and me that, 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 that. one question, I will be short the others. So then you have the very key parameter, as you say, this is uh, the diffraction of unreported cases, F. So the, you have the, the capital. How this the the the, the crucial point, uh, this the turning point, depends when we are changing of these key parameters. So they are. Uh, so the first of all, the effect of the diffusion, and the second, the, the how uh, the turning point depends on the when the parameters change. So I, I didn't get your question about the diffusion. Yeah, you are talking about the diffusion, the movement of people. Yes, That's what you are talking yes, about. Yes, exactly. Uh, I, I don't know about that actually. Uh, I did not consider this question, but uh, okay, then, then second question is concerning the you have the Q parameter uh, mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. in your. Uh, we, we did not consider um, uh, the movement of people in the end uh, at this stage because uh, well. Each time we consider uh, either the city of Wuhan or either the whole country for China, where the movement of people uh, can be somehow neglected. Huh? Yeah. 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 And so, uh, uh, in terms of uh, the dependency with respect to, you, you are asking about the dependency with respect to F. Yeah. So this F is. And what? And, this is, this is your new, new. Uh, so they, uh, before you said it was not unreported. Actually, I, I, what I can tell you what will be the effect on F. I, I cannot tell you about. I, I don't want to say anything wrong. Okay, yeah. I don't know precisely the effect of F on the turning point. Yeah. First, you need to define proper, uh, precisely what you call the turning point. Yeah. 
you say you say that this is the maximal uh, value of reported case. Precisely, in my paper about the SIR model, and we get some sort. We even for the SIR model, we don't know that the turning point, if the turning point is increasing or decreasing, even though we have some numerical evidence. Mm -hmm. So here we don't know. Uh, the dependency of the turning point with respect to F. Yeah. And, uh, but what we, we observe numerically is, uh, is that, of course, when you uh, increase F, you reduce the number of cases drastically. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what we want in the end. Uh, the testing, in other words, the testing will help uh, to, to, that's what, what is going on in Germany, actually. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's, what, that's, that's what happened in South Korea, also, by the way. And so, uh, the, 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 the testing uh, was really helpful uh, in these two countries. And uh, it reduces uh, drastically uh, the number of cases. And so, uh, but the connection between the number of tests uh, of people testing. Seem to have lost Pierre for a minute. Yeah. Uh, Masoud, are you there? Yeah, yes, I am hearing. Yeah. So, so you seem to be saying that um, if you take the, the diffusion into effect, you get some partial differential equation. Is that right? Yes. And that that's what you've been modeling. So, uh, yes, I am interested in uh, because uh, as the uh, it, uh, the speaker said, uh, we have the different kind of uh, uh, situation and. Uh, uh, this will be one of the aspects uh, to catch the, uh, the ideas. And second, for me, it, it, it will be interesting, uh, really, when we are uh, the varying, as he said, in Germany, the, the reported case, and then how the turning point, uh, the, when it will be turning point, in one month or two months, or uh, so that this is the, they are uh, seemingly unrelated from the beginning. But uh, if you put all these things to the one basket, you will see that they are, actually related cases and then i am the permanent contact with germany and then uh, this is the one of the, the crucial point if you have if you are testing you have the, the some the additional information so uh just to finish up that method uh, if you if you have maybe it'll be good to hear from you uh, next week in the seminar yeah uh, ready to speak. is uh, pierre back uh, not yet i guess so uh, when he comes back, uh, Julian, the question I wanted to ask him was, uh, he just said very quickly that the different geographies um, have different properties. Mm -hmm. uh, and then yeah. at the very end, he talked about the places like South Korea and Germany. And I'd like so to I'll just report that Pierre uh, was disconnected somehow, and uh, he will be back on soon. Yeah, yeah. So that the, it was uh, some tendency. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, come on. No, that was it. I wanted to know the question of um, yeah. if you could say some more about the different geographies, because South Korea, Germany, and Switzerland are, of course, of great interest in modeling what's happening here in Toronto. Yeah. So the, 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 this, uh, this, 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 uh, I am really interested in, and uh, and then uh, I am receiving also huge information from Germany. And uh, then this uh, help, this is a turning point, uh, will be really depends on this fact. And uh, so the, the F is a, the, uh, the small F, the, the is very crucial parameter there. And then if I am changing F, then uh, I would like to see that. But he gave the definition turning point as a maximum value of reported case. Yeah? And therefore, the, this, this is, uh, uh, very, uh, very uh, interesting uh, to see that he, he said that this is the uh, very small percentage of unreported case. Uh, and the, 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 the parameter, if I, I don't remember, it was something less than uh, one, but it's very close. Mm -hmm. And but the situation, uh, if you would like to change, uh, if you understand from the week to week and from the two weeks to week, two weeks from week to month, then you have to know how everything depends on F turning point so the and and these and the the random motion they are related good 
Um, Julian, so we're, so we're still waiting for Pierre, right? You're, you're muted. You're muted. Okay. Yep, I'm unmuted. So uh, Pierre is having, uh, I, I, as he put it, I think there are too many kids playing uh, internet games right now. And so his box uh, uh, just uh, gave up. He's rebooting and he will be uh, back online in a couple of minutes in principle. Okay, okay. The, so the other question, if others also know something about this is, I noticed for this China data, within two weeks, the, the number uh, stabilized, right? The, whatever that constant that he was looking for. Um, what is it, new or something? Um, do you remember what I'm talking about? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So uh, is, that, is that right? Is it two weeks? Does that hold up in other geographies too? Uh, well, the, 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 for me, if, if you look his the transmission rate, uh, I wrote, and then uh, the, there are the, uh, he, he, he put the, the, some, the capital N. If you look then, uh, so I wrote the tau, tau of T, when uh, the, in, in his, the concrete case N was the January 23, I guess. So then after that, uh, the, they are starting to, uh, to deal with something. That he said that this is perfect uh, isolation. He stopped tau of t uh, zero. Then uh, now uh, you are just thinking that uh, this I, I I guess the tau of t could decay. So now it, uh, he take this as a model uh, the tau of t, uh, tau of t decay exponentially. So you have the grow, growing exponentially, and then suddenly yep. you are going back. So the other questions will be also uh, the. Uh, why the exponential decrease uh, then, but this is maybe the mathematical, but in the end of the day, they are really has an impact. Why not a polynomial decay? And uh, that would be bad, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, uh, then, uh, then I guess uh, this is the, also the one of the option uh, to see that uh, because uh, the defeating of the all this of things, this, uh, I guess, in the end of the day, first of all, uh, it will be interesting to go deeper and deeper into the model. Uh, and then, uh, so uh, uh, I, I like very, very much all, all this activity, but um, I remember uh, when we started uh, more than 25 years in Germany, the, uh, dealing with the um, application in industry, then uh, it was a very good uh, discussion uh, after that. Yeah, the, what is the first, the mathematical deeper, going the deeper, deeper, or to put uh, the, 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 uh, the numerics and so on and so on. Uh, well, I think right now yeah, we, okay. should all be, we should all be very clear. Right now, the yeah. problem is to make the, the numerics and the data work out yeah. because yeah. people are looking for solutions in real time. Uh, yeah. The math is beautiful mm -hmm. and we can do more of that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, therefore, we have to have the balance. Uh, we have to find the balance and then I guess the, the speaker had, uh, um, did very good. Uh, I really enjoyed so Julian wants to. The speaker is back. I just saw him. Uh... <laughs> Pierre, you are muted. Wait, I, I just finished my uh, teleconference with uh, the uh, chief science advisor. So, see, oh. uh, I, oh. I just heard the uh, uh, most serious discussions uh, the, the mathematical rigor and the the comments from Kuma about the uh, the, the real time need for for contribution from the models. But uh, um, oh. I I I watch you move, uh, video in the very beginning. You see, you show your map. I see my provinces down there. I just wondering what did you talk about it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Shangsha. Yeah. I, at, the, at the beginning, I was in Changsha actually, yeah. and uh, yeah. <laughs> at the early beginning of the epidemic, uh, without knowing, I was so close to the yeah. to, uh, to the very bad place to go, right? And uh, anyway, I was um, lucky not to get infected actually. So, sorry if I may something. I have to leave in five minutes. So just two questions I had shared for you. Uh, mm -hmm. One was this uh, this two week convergence you saw for your parameter, whatever that was, that point, um, uh, that new, I think it was, was some parameter yeah. that, 
but is in two weeks it more or less stabilized to to what uh, what it was supposed to be right mm. yeah. uh, is that is that peculiar to this data or this uh, geography or is that something you're seeing elsewhere as well uh, actually yeah it's a good question yeah it would be too too simple if it would work for everything like that you know uh, well let's be clear about that the there are several difficulties. First, you need to, the data in China seems to be good in a way because uh, we, once you fit Chi 1, Chi 2, Chi 3, then you are good in a way. Then you get this very nice, uh, and you know the, the beginning of the confinement period very well as well, which is not clear in other countries. So that it seems that the data in China were good. If you compare, for example, to uh, South Korea, you can get similar results also. You can fit the data very well, but uh, it's much more difficult to get, actually. Oh. Uh, and and, and, and uh, while actually there, there was a lot of uh, reported cases and, and so on, but the dynamic of the disease is very different. I mean, uh, they, they get a very different policy compared to China. That is, uh, they get a, so they, in South Korea, they uh, decided to go all for uh, testing right. and try to uh, uh, track uh, the uh, early uh, transmission case, actually. That's how they handle this disease very well. And uh, so it's very different compared to China, where there was many cases at the beginning, and then uh, they started to shut down everything, then try to to solve the problem, right? And uh, actually, the, for the for Korea, I, it seems that one guy transmitted the disease to many people in some uh, party or something like that, and really just spread cool. yeah. to many many people in. The, South mm. Korea. But so when you go to, to Italy now, yeah. for example, it's again different. I mean, uh, the policy there is again uh, very different uh, in terms of a shutdown. You know, it w was more gradual in a way, you know. And so again, for Germany, it's again something different, and for France also. So um, I think uh, this kind of idea can be used uh, uh, can be used because it captures something for sure. You you can fit the data so well, you know. So uh, there must be something behind that. And uh, but uh, but uh, there there is a lot of things to understand here. I think and uh, still. Uh, uh, it's just a sort of a beginning, uh, I would say. Okay, so thank you very much. Just, well, you guys can continue, but I have to jump off now for another meeting. But I just wanted to say this, that uh, if, if people could pay attention to these two interventions, the extensive testing and the contact tracing and what that does to the model and using that, what kind of predictions you can make, that would be extremely interesting. Mm -hmm. So I hope mm -hmm. uh, people do develop those models. So, so all of you, please continue as long as you like. I'm going to sign off. Thank you very much for a very interesting talk. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Please go on. Uh, Pierre, I'll relay there was a question from Ranita about uh, F, the little F. And the question was, how confident are you about assuming F to be 0 0.8? Mm -hmm. I'm not confident. I'm not confident about that, actually. Uh, I think it should come from what we try to do. In, if you look at my last uh, simulation, uh, I think it helps to look at also uh, the accumulated and the daily data together, you know, together. Uh, uh, what, uh, maybe I can show you again. Let me see. Where was it? Uh, what was that? Oh, no, come on. Give me a break. Do you see my screen? Do you see not me? yet. Uh, wait, okay. I don't know because I'm not in the. Ah, uh, okay. No, so I, I... Should, I should share it again. No. Yeah. Yep. It will be very nice. Okay. Let me see. Partager. Oh, yeah.
Do you see this, uh, this yep, slide? Yep, we're good now. Yeah. So, um, so here you see uh, we get a very good fit for, of course, for the cumulative data, but uh, the fit to the weekly is a little bit questionable. The, the daily is perfectly fine, actually. But um, one thing is, uh, so at first I thought maybe uh, it would help to have uh, to to compare this this set of data to the to the model as well, actually, uh, to make uh, because uh, it's more more uh, uh, trustable in a way if you can fit the three together, right? And but but but. Uh, in the end, I think that uh, we need to uh, uh, we need some other sources to, to fix those parameters, some other way. Uh, also, you know, uh, not only this. Uh, what this model can tell you, it can tell you what will be the result of having a some fraction. It's I, I, for instance, at the beginning you. You can fit the data very well with many different f values, values of f. So it's kind of uh, we are not saying that uh, our f value is is the best one, okay? So, but it works at least. That's one potential candidate, okay? But but. Uh, well, such a fit uh, cannot be obtained with any values of f, by the way. This one is very good, okay? Uh, but that's, that's not an easy question, again, to answer. Okay, uh, so are there any other questions? From, uh, we lost everybody, we only... No, no, <laughs> there's still 50, 51 people. We are, yeah. we are here. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, my it's question is... Oh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Now, my question about, uh, is about uh, if uh, you study or uh, the same model can be applied somehow to predict unreported death uh, numbers. Uh, actually, we tried that uh, without uh, publishing anything. And uh, somehow for China, it works fine. Um, we, it's possible. It's doable, I would say. It's doable, but again, uh, okay. The death will mainly come from the uh, reported case because it, actually reported case here mean also severe, right? And so because the, the mild symptoms case correspond to the unreported. Actually. So most of the deaf people will come from this uh, this group of uh, reported here in what we do actually. Huh? Uh, so, but I think we did something like that, but uh, we did not uh, focus too much too much on this question of uh, of uh, computing the number of deaths actually. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, on on that topic, is it fair to say? that um, the, the estimating the number of deaths is difficult because it depends severely on how your cases get reported, right? If your cases, if you figure out your cases because people come to the hospital because they're su supremely sick, you're gonna have a higher death rate computation than if you're testing a bunch of people who have some mild symptoms, but definitely, but have the disease and um, like they did in South Korea. So you'll see things like in South Korea, the death rate is significantly different than like, for instance, in China or in Italy. Yeah. Yeah, well, but what I was saying is that it's do doable from this model. I mean, uh, of course, the death rate will be different for, for sure in the US than in China uh, because the population don't have the same... Uh, uh, the same, uh, uh, the same, uh, well, 
actually the main, mo most of the people who are dying from the COVID are uh, co-infected or, 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 or are sick first, sick first from something else, like a cardiac problem, like uh, diabetes. That's actually, like, uh, that's actually an issue also in, in the US, right? Because we have a lot of inequality in the US. I'm, I'm actually in Milwaukee right now. Um, we have a lot of inequality in the U.S. And what we're seeing, for instance, in Milwaukee is that, like, there's a lot high incidence of, um, of the virus amongst African-American population in the city, which is about 50% of the population in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. But, like, the state is, has a very low percentage of African-Americans. But you see, like, the high concentration of, of, of incidence and death in the um, African-American communities. And in general, you're going to see it in, like, in a lot of underserved minority populations. The thing mm -hmm. that like the differential equations, I think don't get us right because they're homogeneous methods, right? Um, is that you don't get to see the, those differences between segments of the population and, well, um, and their you access, their you access to care. Right, but you'd have to model them separately, right? Yeah, sure. You, you have yeah. to have different groups with different, uh, different uh, ability, yeah. different parameter exactly. value and so on, exactly. that's it. Yeah, no, no, I understand, uh, right. And, and but the point is, uh, when you start to talk about uh, death rate, the situation for sure will be very different in China and US. Uh, you get this obesity problem in US, for instance. And uh, well, there are obese people in China, but not that many, actually. There are other diseases, probably, but uh, other cause. It's yeah, always also uh, a lot of inner city asthma, um, undiagnosed yeah. asthma in inner right, city. Right. Yeah. That, that is a typical. Today, I learned in France that most of the people who get a uh, heart, uh, heart problem uh, die very, are very likely to die from COVID. Uh, so it's another, uh, it's another cause, uh, 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 non trivial cause of, uh, of death. Actually, uh, from the, it's a combination of two, two, two diseases, huh? and so uh, it's a very uh, complicated problem, I would say. Stage, and for sure, uh, it's not only a question of community; it's a question of uh, of your lifestyle. It's a question of uh, many things, I would say. And uh, but for sure, it's. The simplest thing to do is to distinguish the people who are sick from something, some kind of, and the other one. The other one will be very likely to, to overcome this disease, apparently, as far as I know. And so... If I can ask one more question, um, sure. what's the sort of like the low end threshold of, of those models, right? So, I mean, I know there are, um, you know, because they're differential equation models, it, it helps when n is large. But it, one thing that might be of extreme interest is modeling differently the spread of the disease amongst the general population versus the spread of the disease amongst communities like that pract who are at the front line of healthcare, right? What because, do you mean? Uh, so, for you, instance, modeling. You want modeling, to talk about small population versus large population? No, no, no. I mean, like, for instance, within a country, modeling differently the spread of the disease amongst the population in general, or, you know, jointly, the spread of the disease among the general population and the spread of the disease amongst doctors and nurses. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah, because. Yeah. I mean, that you know, it goes back to, to what we said earlier. I mean, you need to. Look at different group of people. There are, of course, if you talk about nurses and medical doctors, they're more likely to get infected, even though they, they, they use some mask and all sorts of protection. Uh, well, if, if you talk about France now, we don't even have masks for medical doctor, and uh, we can't believe it actually. And so many medical doctors died from uh, uh, taking care of the patients. Yeah, and those deaths, those deaths have compound effects, right? Because that's one less healthcare pr practitioner who can help people get better. And so that means that your death rate might actually go up because you're losing people who can actually take care of those people. Yeah, that's possible. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah people are, anyway, people are very careful with the medical people are probably very careful now with this, taking this very seriously everywhere. I mean, I don't know in the US now, but uh, in France it's very serious. Uh, uh, in, I think in Europe in general it's very serious now. And, uh, yeah. I hope Pierre. Uh, I, uh, oui? Yes. There's, a, there's a qu another question uh, that I'm relaying from the uh, chat thing. Uh, how can you explain that in cumulative, that's from Olivia, uh, how can you explain that in cumulative terms the reported values dominate the, under, uh, the unreported values quite significantly? Because and I given that. that this yeah, uh, F equals 0.8, so 80%. 80% of the reported cases are, 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 are uh, well, the cumulative reported cases represent 80% of the total number of cases, while the other one is 20% actually here. Just because I took F equals 0 0.8. If yeah. you take F equals 0 0.1, it would be the, the, the other way around. Huh? And so, uh, uh, but it would change also the final total number of cases because uh, the number of uh, for those guys here that is the best situation in some sense for the for the for the for the disease because the number of people among those those infect, infectious the number of people who can transmit are only the uh, unreported so. You want this number not to be too large, right? In order to avoid too many transmission, right? Okay, are there any other questions in uh, the audience? <laughs> okay, I think that's fine, right? Maybe that was, uh, that was it. Uh, so, uh, uh, wait. Uh, 